Welcome to Tough Conversations with David Wood, where play meets depth. We help teams and high-performing leaders like you to master your tough conversations so you succeed in your career and in your life. When we avoid tough conversations, we stay small. Teams stay disengaged, conflicted, and ultimately end up quitting. When we lean in and master our tough conversations, they become the defining moments that literally shape our careers, our relationships, and our lives. So let's dive in and master your next tough conversation so you can be the leader that you would follow. Let's play. I'm a totally transparent person, okay? When it comes to my mind and my heart, I'm completely a nudist, okay? I tell everybody what I think and what I feel. <laughs> also, in my relationship, I'm naked all the time, okay? Physically as well. I, I love sex, okay? So I'm physically naked, but I'm, to the world, I'm emotionally naked. You're an emotional nudist. Yes, I'm emotional nudist. Welcome everybody to another episode of Tough Conversations with David Wood. And this time it's also with John Gray. And uh, welcome, John. Well, thanks so much. Good to be with you again. Well, this is an incredible bio here. Dr. John Gray is the author of a little book called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. USA Today listed Mars Venus as number six among the most influential books of the last quarter century. In hardcover, it was the number one best-selling nonfiction book of the 90s. John's books are translated into approximately 45 languages. My jealousy just keeps growing, John, as I listen to this. I aspire to, to, to much of this. His more recent books include Mars and Venus in the Bedroom, Why Mars and Venus Collide, and Work With Me. John has appeared repeatedly on Oprah. So, so it's not just enough to say John's been on Oprah, which for many of us would be a, a, a career pinnacle. But he's, he's got to drop that word repeatedly in on Oprah, as well as Dr. Oz, Today, CBS, This Morning, Good Morning America, and basically any show that matters. John, I'm so curious, how is it for you to hear that? Are you kind of inoculated to that? You're like, ah, oh, yeah, that's just, that's old hat. Or when you hear it, are you like, damn, I'm good or something else? Well, it's old hat, but it's, uh, it's comforting because then people will give the due respect to what I'm saying. That's a good point, that, that, that people will hear you and you have yeah. impact. Uh, John, this is a, I didn't realize it till this moment, but this is kind of a poignant moment for me having you here on the podcast because I met you in a hotel, in a hotel lobby in Corte Madeira a long, 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 long time ago. And it was, it was after midnight. And that was a big turning point for me because we connected and you actually nominated me to the Transformational Leadership Council which has been quite a boost to my, my career, I would say, and, and you're responsible for that. And thank you for that. You're welcome, you're welcome. Yeah. And now I haven't seen you since the, uh, the retreat in Mexico and we had a service then. You, in the last two years, you, you've lost your life partner, Bonnie, uh, a beautiful soul. And I remember at that, at that ceremony, uh, you know, I, I, I was crying more than anyone else just watching you and looking at you and imagining what it's like to lose someone like that. Um, I'm curious how that was for you and how life has been since such a massive, massive event. Bonnie died. Bonnie and I were married for 34 years and known each other for 40 years. So she's more than half my life, way more than half my life. I've been next to her and she's a part of all my successes. She's a part of everything good in my life. Um, and sometimes when you have all that, you take it for granted. For about a year, I cried and cried and cried. I miss her terribly. Even he, every now, every other day or something, I'll have a, a 10, 10 minute cry twice a day or something like that. Just, uh, mm. I haven't given anything away of hers yet, you know, and when I do the things, like just walking down to my office, I, I'm growing a garden now. She was a gardener. I never a gardener, but now I have a garden. So I look at the garden. I think about what she would do. And 
I got all these vegetables now. I have to eat them all myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I feel touched by, by many of the things you've just shared. Well, you, so you spoke of an open heart. And in our pre-interview, you said that that's very important between the sexes and in relationships. So let's talk about how people can have a better time between the sexes in communicating and with tough conversations. And so I want to I tap your brain and get some stuff that I can use so that when I'm speaking, particularly with a woman, is there something I can be doing that is going to have the conversation go better? Well, the same ideas I talk about for relationship or some of the ideas I talk about for relationship directly apply to the workplace. Not all of them. I mean, I, I, my whole thing is love, okay? So the whole love your children, love yourself, love God, love your real spouse and whatever, I got the whole package. Gender difference is just one of the important aspects of being able to love because our big problem is to effectively communicate love. Uh, we need to understand who we're dealing with. We need to correctly interpret them. So here, let's take an idea of a personal relationship and see how it applies in the workplace. Uh, the bottom line, because now, now there's a huge opposition confusion about gender differences. It's, it's still even more politically incorrect to talk about gender differences than it was when I started, okay? It was politically incorrect then, and then it, it sort of took a huge wave of acceptance, and then there's this counter wave, this pushback right now, of complete gender confusion. Uh, <clears throat> so, and, and so people wanna say that men and women are not different. Of course we're different, it's so obvious we're different but then they want to minimize those differences. And I say, you know, if your heart's open, there's not that much difference between men and women. But our hearts only close when we don't understand a situation. Wow. Now, that's why our hearts will close when, when differences show up and we don't understand them, then our hearts close. And then we become more and more different. So let me give you an example of that. If you look at biologically, so I shifted my message now, and, and that's in a book called Beyond Mars and Venus. It's my most recent book on relationships between men and women. Beyond the traditional ideas, if you're in a traditional relationship where uh, a woman is dependent on a man for finance and she's primarily a homemaker, most of the examples that are in men are from Mars, women are from Venus, will, you'll relate to and you'll learn a lot from. But then there's this other dynamic, which has happened 30 years later or 25 years later since I wrote Men Are From Mars, where women are more independent, okay? So they don't depend on men for money. They can make their own money. And even if they are dependent, they feel that if we got a divorce, I could make my own money. Uh, so the world has changed. Women don't need men like they used to. Mm. So right now, what does it mean for a man if you're not needed? It means you're out of work. What is the Ooh. hardest thing for men? to be out of work. It's a biological reality. Now, why is that so depressing to men when they're out of work? Is, and we see that to be the case. They become violent, they become angry, they become irritable, they become passive, they become drug addicts, they become alcoholics when they don't get paid for their work or they're out of work. It's the worst thing for men. Statistically, we see this is true. A man who doesn't get paid for his work, he also goes to jail, criminal. <clears throat> Just people who are just men who don't know how to make money steal money. Why? We look at the biological reasons for that. Okay, you can get all these psychological stuff and that's all good, that's all good. But the biology is such, those are all just opinions. Hard science. Hard science is that when a man gets messages that he is successful in making a difference, his hormone testosterone goes up. When a woman feels successful, and making a difference, her testosterone goes up. Same thing, so we're the same that way, except that women make babies and men are the other side of making babies. We need more testosterone to make babies. Women need more estrogen to make babies, not testosterone. Big difference. When a man has 10 times more testosterone than a woman, he has well-being. When a man has 20 times more testosterone than the woman he's dating, he'll fall in love. That's a biological reality. And for women, they cannot fall in love if their testosterone is high. Oh. They can't fall in love. They fall in love when their estrogen becomes 20 times higher than a man's. Wow. So in terms of falling in love and making babies, 
it's good for a man to have testosterone and it's good for a woman to have estrogen. And we're born to make babies. See, it's the biological imperative of our body, the body's well-being, and we know that a depressed man has low testosterone. Now, there can be a thousand different reasons he has low testosterone, but let's just get down to something we can all agree on, which is a fact, is that when men feel successful, when men feel powerful, I can make a difference, or women, their testosterone goes up. But for men, their well-being, their feeling of well-being, and caring and open-heartedness is dependent upon testosterone levels being high in his body. For right. women, it's dependent upon estrogen levels being high in her body relative to a man's. All right. So what we want to learn is what makes testosterone in men, what makes estrogen in women, and the same is true in the workplace. If you learn how to communicate to a man so his testosterone will go up, he will work for you. He will be motivated. He will have positive feelings towards you. He will, he will work harder for you. He will also trust you and want to work with you. So testosterone is the well-being in men. Estrogen is the well-being in women. How to communicate in a way that increases estrogen in women. Same thing would increase estrogen in men. But estrogen doesn't lower a man's stress levels. It doesn't create well-being men have to have testosterone, then estrogen feels good, just like testosterone feels good to women, estrogen feels good to men, but it doesn't create the well-being. See, okay. something can feel good, but it doesn't make well-being. You can yell at somebody, it feels good, but it doesn't create well-being. Okay, so this makes sense to me that, you, that in the workplace, I want a man's testosterone to go up, so I want to have him feel useful, acknowledge him, uh, praise him, that makes a lot of sense. And then he's going to work harder. Appreciate, um, appreciate, appreciate. Appreciate. Now here's interesting. In my seminars, I will often have men walk on stage and pretend to be champion athletes. <clears throat> They'll run around. We'll all clap for them as if they're the gold medal soccer players, whatever, of our country. And then at the end, when everybody's appreciating, they glow. And then what do they naturally do? They bow. Anytime a performer performs on stage and you appreciate them, they then bow. Bowing means respect. If you appreciate someone, they will respect you more. So when women at home learn the power to appreciate a man for what he can do, what he does do, not for what he, don't focus on what he doesn't do, focus on what he does do and appreciate him, he will do more. If you focus on what he doesn't do, he will do less. And then you can come to me as your therapist and say, see, I don't appreciate him because he does less and less and less. And she doesn't know that her lack of appreciation doesn't provide the fuel for him to feel the motivation that he felt in the beginning. Now, the flip side of that is for her to feel appreciation, she needs estrogen. When your well, estrogen hang on, go up. Hang on, before we get to her, I want to dive into this a bit deeper so I understand it about the men. So... It sounds ironically, if I'm a woman or a man and I want this guy to respect me more, you're saying I should appreciate him more. Yes, this and is then, reciprocal. And then I will get that respect. So that makes a lot of sense to me. All right, so now on the flip side, wouldn't I, wouldn't I be doing the same thing that if I want respect from a woman, I would give her respect and appreciation as well? Is it, is it symmetrical? Or is it asymmetrical? Is there something different we want to do with the women? Yes. Wouldn't, I, wouldn't I want her testosterone to go up too? Men, men get plenty of respect. What men need most today is appreciation. See, remember back in the 50s, father knows best. That was the idea. Men got all the respect. And women said, hold on here, hold on here. Men know least. <laughs> father doesn't know best. Mom knows best. That's okay. We all, women are the ones who did not get respect. And women are ones who need respect the most for an emotional fulfillment. Everyone deserves respect. Everyone deserves appreciation for what they do. Clearly, everyone deserves. But if a woman has a lack of well being, if you provide respect, messages that say, I care about you, I understand you, I'm there for you, I do things for you, I honor you, that's called respecting that will raise her estrogen levels. 
So I'll give you an example in the workplace. I'm having a conversation with a woman. I said, she has a question for me. And I say, you know, I don't have an answer for that. I'll get that for you and call you next week with the answer. What would be a good time for you? I don't say what's a good time for me. I say, what would be a good time for you? I'll call you. Now, ironically, what a man doesn't realize, if you do that, it's highly significant for bonding for that woman. Because wow. you're going to do something for her. You're going to say, I'm going to do it on this day. What would be a good time for you? You settle on a time and then you make sure you make that call at that time. Oh, this is incredible call. timing because it's, I just had a session today with a, a, a woman vice president and she's really upset because her boss doesn't respond to her. Respect to her. Respect. That's what it is. This is what upsets women the most because when somebody respects you, your estrogen goes up. Now, here's another example. If I, if somebody carries a box for you, you feel, oh, thank you. You naturally feel appreciation. Okay. They respected you. You're carrying several boxes. They come along and help you carry one. What your, what's your reaction? Oh, thank you. You honored them, you respected their needs, their wishes, their wants, you did something for them. In my marriage for my wife, for example, she knows I like to drive faster than her, but when she's in the car, if she ever feels I'm driving too fast, she doesn't say anything, she just holds the handle. And I say, oh, I'll slow down. And I put my hand on her thigh. And this is a personal thing. I put my hand on her thigh and I say, and that's for you. And she says, I know, and I appreciate it. She doesn't say, well, you should go slow. You're a bad driver. That's what many women would say. Oh, you drive bad. No, she appreciates that I slow down for her. It's my gift to her. I do this for you. If I'm selling to a man, for example, I'll always point out how great I am. See, I'll be, I'll, <laughs> I'll be Donald Trump. I can handle it. I can do it. I'll handle this. Look what I've done. It's kind of like even when you introduce me, do I, what do I feel about the introduction? I don't really care about the introduction, but you have to show your credentials. You have to show, look at me, I can do this. The men then give you trust. All I have to do for the women is say, I love my wife, I've been married for 34 years, and the women will trust me. You see the- I love your transparency here. You're pulling back the curtain, and I, I love naming what's happening. Like name that thing, and you're like, yeah, I share my credentials, so I build trust with the men. They're like, this guy can get stuff done. And then with the women, I let them know I have a soft side. I have a heart. I have a tender side. Completely. And so I can connect with them. I love that. You know what I used to do? I used to have a show on Broadway. And what I would do on Broadway is I'd, I'd tell them, I'd say, now at that point, I'd sold 10 million books in America. So I said, now in my introduction, I, you all heard that I've sold 10 million books in America. Now, right now I'm talking to you and every man, when you heard that, you're figuring, I wonder how much money he makes on every book. That's the first reaction men make. And then I say, and I've been married like at that time, 20 years or something. They say, oh, I, amazing that he, so he loves his wife so much after 20 years. So there's the, there's the, the not that <laughs> women don't care about somebody who has money and men don't care about someone who has a loving relation. It's how much we need it. See, men need like a vitamin. When you appreciate a man, you're giving him a vitamin that builds his testosterone. Right. And a man on a team always has his role, what I'm really good at, what I can do better than others. That's what he needs to be singled out for his special skills, his abilities, where he can feel, look what I did. Whereas for a woman, it's look what we did, is she feels included. So if you understand that feeling included is an estrogen stimulator, Okay, I'm not alone, I have support. I'm part of a team. Not that men don't have that need, but men's need is greater to look what I can do. Look what I did on the team. What's my role? I'm the quarterback, I'm the, the right end. I'm the one who did the touchdown. I'm the one who blocked this. He's gonna have a specialty and put a badge of honor for that. A woman's gonna feel, oh, we do this together. So always, you talk to a woman as a team, so here I am with my team of women and a few men. And everybody's talking and contributing, but I notice one woman's not saying anything. If I don't understand women and men, how it shows up sometimes, not all the time, but if I, she's a woman over there and maybe she's more on her female energy side, she's gonna be less assertive 
and more wanting to blend with the team. So she's got, she may not say something because it's going back, back and forth too fast. She's waiting. She's feeling like, well, doesn't anybody care what I think? And she's waiting in a sense to be called on. I don't know that. If we're in a team and you're not saying anything as a man, I'm not going to say, well, David, what do you think? I assume my assumption is you're a guy. If you've got something to say, you're going to get say it. We're yeah. playing basketball. You're going to take the ball and run with it. Yeah. And I'm curious about but that. Not, but so then the yeah. woman, if, if, if this woman over here is not saying anything, I will ignore her thinking if she had something to say, she would say it. But some women will feel like, if you feel I'm a valued part of the team, why aren't you asking me for what I think? And She's wondering why she has so complaints about her husband and her mind answers her. She finds everything wrong with her husband. And she has, see women when they're unhappy with their spouses or men, if he's unhappy, but we're talking about women now, when she's unhappy with her spouse, she will find all the reasons to justify what she feels. But if she was feeling happy, she would find all the reasons to justify why she's happy. Right. That's Always a better people cycle. find reasons to justify how we feel. And they give other people the power to turn out, this is how I feel. But no, we are responsible for how I feel. You know, women will say, oh, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do this, and therefore I don't feel love. Now, whose problem is that? That's your problem. You're, if you want to be successful in the work world, or you want to be successful in your relationship, you have to open your heart. And most people, when you talk about the workplace, they don't think about love as the, as the most important ingredient. But you know, anybody who's successful, a leader loves his people and he loves his customers and their customers love him. I'm successful, people love me and I love them. I love helping them. I love doing my job. Love is your heart is open when you're doing something. But we don't think about love because we tend to always think love is just the romantic stuff as opposed to I appreciate the people that work with me. I, get, I care yeah. about the people that work for me. Our friend Steve Farber has published a book called Love is Just Good Business. And I'm thinking about him right now. He, he opened me up to this, you know, even for me years ago until I heard his talk. You know, it was kind of like, oh, I can't mention love in the workplace. After his talk, I can. He gave great examples. Yeah. Everybody wants right. your... You know, somebody wrote a book also, you know, you want raving fans. You want, everybody should be, wow, John Gray's the greatest. David, wow, I heard David talk. He's amazing. They love, that's love, appreciation, respect, right. honoring, understanding. Right. All these are forms of love. And you won't get that love from the outer world till you love the outer world. Let me recap some of this for listeners. Yeah. This is such valuable stuff. And, and for myself, if you've got a man in your life, at home or at work and it's, if things aren't going very well, you need to uh, have him feel valued, have him feel trusted and have him feel appreciated. And if you've got a woman in your life, things aren't going that well, it could be at home or at work, are you respecting her? Are you putting attention on her needs and showing that you care and that you're listening and you're showing up on time and you're checking what she needs and also giving her a sense of inclusion. So you, you summarized it quite wonderfully. Well done. They, I was listening and taking notes. So I love that. And I want to ask you before we wrap up, John, something that's been coming up with my clients and my friends is this idea that it's harder for a woman to speak up and ask for what she wants in our society. And it's harder for her to say no um, and disappoint someone. Is that a cultural thing? Is that something that uh, because of how we've been raised differently that it's harder? Or do you not agree with that or something else? Actually, the way women receive attention, love and affection the most, one of the ways, one of the ways is if they share what they think and feel, okay? Because see, when I share with you what I think and feel, I've just taken down the wall. Mm. Like you said earlier, transparent. I'm totally transparent person. Okay. When it comes yeah. to my mind and my heart, I'm completely a nudist. Okay. I tell everybody what I think and what I feel. <laughs> also in my relationship, I'm naked all the time. Okay. Physically as well. <laughs> I, I love sex. Okay. So I'm physically naked, but um, to the world, I'm emotionally naked. You're an emotional nudist. Yes. I'm emotional nudist and ment mentally and spiritually. Okay. All that I'm transparent. Uh, I, I have no shame about that. I feel I love myself. Okay. I don't have to hide who I am. 
So, so many times women express how they feel and men come along with logic and say, well, that's ridiculous. Well, you're making a big deal out of that. Well, you don't need to be upset about that, but that's not a problem. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. So why talk about it? So there's a million messages that women get that if they actually are emotionally transparent, somebody's gonna come along and make them wrong. So naturally there's a tendency to hide what you feel to the, to the other sex, okay? Particularly to men and to a certain extent to other women. Women will say to me, because some women are like men. They've been indoctrinated that female is weak, that having emotions is weakness, as opposed to emotions is the foundation of love. Wow. That is awesome. John, I, I love how passionate you are about this topic, and I love geeking out with you on communication. This is really fun for me. Where can our listeners find out more about you? Well, they can go to, uh, also I have a Facebook site. I do some videos on there occasionally, um, John Gray, and there's a marsvenus.com. Marsvenus.com is uh, my website, and there's a free seminar there uh, a four-day seminar for people if they want to uh, sign up, they get it for free. I, I do it with my daughter, Lauren Gray. She's uh, an adult now. She's been teaching this for 10 years and quite brilliant. MarsVenus.com. Go and check it out. John's got a lot to share about the, the sexes and how we work and go and find out more about John's emotional nudity. John, it's... it's <laughs> my nudist camp, but also my website, something we didn't touch on, David, and I like to talk about it just briefly. Yeah. I see this is behavior to stimulate hormones. We also need nutrition, and today we're nutritionally deficient. So I have a whole section on wellness in terms of everything. If you have low libido, if you don't sleep well, if you have depression, if you have anxieties, if you have overreactivity, if you have a lack of testosterone, lack of estrogen, natural solutions for those things to help your body so that these behavioral techniques work better. Thank you, John. I appreciate you. It's good to see you. And Roxanne on the, on the thread says, please tell John, thank you for me. This is a woman asking for what she wants. So uh, thank you uh, from uh, Roxanne. Roxanne, I love you. Thanks for being on the show. You've been listening to Tough Conversations with David Wood. Now it's action time. Mastering your tough conversations will have a major impact on your team, your company, and you as a high-performing executive or entrepreneur. If you're ready, request a discovery session with me at playforreal.life so we can transform your team, your company, and you. And if you've enjoyed this episode, I would love you to help me spread this message of tough conversations in a very simple way. Just leave a public review at playforreal.life forward slash podcast. And you may hear me read it out loud and thank you live on a future podcast. Now, let's play.